Hola, estimadas lectoras y estimados lectores. Me llamo Constantine. I'm an anarchist. At the age of 19, I blew up the statue of Stalin in the middle of Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria. I spent 10 years in jail and I kept on fighting, trying to salvage my dignity through the dark days of the dictatorship of the Communist Party of Bulgaria. Now, in democratic times, as some people like to call them, I'm trying to recover my history through the archive of the secret police. But this has turned out to be difficult. I do not have free access to the documents and I do not have any say in the public sphere. I am a lone wolf fighting for justice in a history that has given me no place. Me llamo Metodi. I have served my whole life. I have served the state. I have served the secret police. I have served the party. I have always done my job the way it should be done. I was reliable. I was one of these people who upheld law and order. I was the backbone of a system that functioned. A system that had to defend itself against terrorists and people who do not respect the laws. Against people who think that their individual freedom should be the law. People like that are dangerous. People like Constantine. Hola, me llamo Ilya Troyanov. I am the author of this novel, published in German under the title Macht und Widerstand, Power and Resistance in Spanish, Poder y Resistencia. It is a novel that uses the historical example of Bulgaria to make a very general statement, a statement about the possibility of individual rebellion, the fight for truth, dignity, freedom, in times in which it seemed impossible to gain anything by this fight, in times in which this fight was as some people like to say, Don Quixotic, it did not have any chance of success. It was a fight only for principle and not for any gain. And therefore, I think you might find this novel interesting because, as I've heard from readers, there are quite a number of parallels to what has happened in other countries, also in a country like Spain, with the dictatorship, but this is only one aspect of the novel. The other aspect is how does society treat these dark times? Is there a discourse which strives for a critical assessment of the past? Are people who tortured, who killed, are people who profited from the dictatorship brought to justice? What forms of healing is there? And if there is no truth and reconciliation, as it was called, for example, in South Africa, can society truly progress? Can it truly heal? This is something that many, many societies that have come out of dictatorship have been forced to reflect upon. And this novel is a literary effort and circling around these questions. So if you find that interesting, you might 
find it interesting to read Poder y Resistencia, published by Acandilado. Muchas gracias. Adiós.